Welcome to the NWAETC Project ECHO. I'm Kent Unruh, and I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Brian Wood, our medical director, to introduce our guest. Thanks, Kent. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. We're going to have a very lively session today. After the didactic, do have a good announcement, an important announcement about a guidelines update that came out yesterday. Check your email for that news alert, and we'll be talking more about that soon. But first, we're going to start today with a little bit of a unique didactic. Thank you to Dr. Edels Flores for helping with this. We've recommended several times on ECHO that participants do an HIV dementia screen, and then we were talking about it, realizing maybe it would be helpful to demonstrate how exactly to do that. My own experience in clinic is it's not the easiest thing to administer, and it takes a little bit of planning and practice even to do in clinic. So I'm going to ask Dr. Udell's Flores to make a couple of introductory comments about when she uses which screening test and their utility and how to follow up on those. You should have these screening tests in your email from the weekly email this week if you want to pull those up and follow along with us or if you'd like to print them out so that you can have them in hand while you watch. But with that, Christine, maybe I can ask you just to make a couple comments quickly. When do you reach for which scale? If there are abnormalities, what do you do next? And maybe where's the real benefit and limitation of these tests to start with? Okay. I think the first thing that we should do is just ask a couple of screening questions. And basically, anyone who complains of memory problems or feeling slowed down in terms of their motor functioning should be screened, at least using the HIV dementia screen or the international HIV dementia scale. And if, I mean, we could also do a MOCA if we wanted to. And if they're significantly abnormal, we can refer for further psychometric testing. And in our clinic, we have the luxury of having a Dr. Strachan do a one-hour battery of tests to identify how severe some of the deficits are. I use the HIV dementia scale for people who have an average level of education, at least some high school, if not a high school graduate. If someone is non-English speaking, even if they speak English, but they might not write English or they might not write the alphabet, for example, in English, then I would use the International HIV Dementia Scale. And it's also good for people with very low educational levels. Now, if someone primarily has memory problems and their motor function seems relatively normal, then I would probably do a MOCA instead because we have to remember that our HIV population is aging and since HIV has a chronic inflammatory effect on the brain, we can imagine that perhaps people would be more likely to develop memory problems if they've had HIV for a long period of time. And remember about 50% of our population is going to have some type of HIV associated neurocognitive deficit. Most of it is going to be asymptomatic, but there's quite a lot who will have mild neurocognitive dysfunction and maybe 2% who have actual HIV dementia. So first thing we're going to do is the HIV dementia scale. And you need your clock for this. You need a stopwatch and know how to work your stopwatch before you start the test because it can be relatively difficult. So the first thing we test is memory and registration. Brian, I'm going to give you four words to remember. Dog, hat, green, and peach. Could you repeat that for me? Dog, hat, green, peach. Great. Great. Now I'd like you to remember that. I'm going to ask you that in a little while. Next, we're going to do the antipsychotic eye movements, and this is specifically for attention to measure that. And this is the most difficult part. This is where we all have to be trained on how to do this. So you raise your, your fingers to the level of the patient's shoulders, more or less, and about that width as well. And I'm going to instruct you, Brian, to look at the finger that moves and then look back at my nose afterwards. Okay, I'm going to practice this again. Look at the finger that moves. Okay, and back to my nose. Look at the finger and my nose. Okay, now what I want you to do is I'm going to have you look at the opposite finger. So when you see a finger moving, you're going to look at the finger that isn't moving and then look back at my nose. All right? Okay. Uh, Brian, you missed a few there. 
<laughs> you have to do 20 trials. As soon as you know that they're comfortable and looking at the finger that doesn't move, then you do 20 trials. And if it's three or less errors, it's you get six points on that, or you get four points on that. If it's more than five errors, it goes down to four, three, two, and, and if there are more than six errors, it's zero points. Then the next step is to check psychomotor speed, and this is the part that you really need someone to be a native English speaker. So on a blank piece of paper, let's see if I can find one. All right, Brian, I would like you to write the alphabet as fast as you can in uppercase letters. And I'll tell you when to start. All right, you can start now. So you did that in 13.6 seconds, very good. People actually get um, 21 seconds or less to get the full six points on that. Now, do you remember the four words I gave you? I believe they were dog, green, hat, and peach. That's correct. Okay, that's memory recall, and he got 100% on that one, or four points total. If he can't remember a word, you can give him a clue for example, dog, you say it's an animal, hat, an article of clothing, green, a color, and peach, a fruit. And you could give them half a point if you say, give them a clue and they come up with it. Now the final test is to copy a cube, but since Brian's doing so good, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna have him copy, instead of a cube, it's gonna be a pentagon. It's gonna be a three-dimensional pentagon. Here we go, okay. And I want you to wait for just a second, okay. Now I would like you to do as accurately as possible, copy that hexagon. I think that's it. Okay, yeah, you got it. All right, so there's a total of 16 points. And Brian missed one, I'd say, on the antipsychotic eye movement, so he got 15 out of 16. And really, anything that's 10 or less, the patient should be referred for further testing at that point. So you made it, no problem. And what we can do is a modified HIV dementia test, and I think Natalia sent that to you as well. And that's when you cut out the antipsychotic eye movements so that there's a maximum of 12 points. If you do it that way, it's faster. You don't have to be counting up your trials and things like that. And the maximum would be 12, and anything less than 7.5 is considered indicative of possible hand. It's important to remember that these tests don't diagnose hand, but the results suggest that there may be hand of present, and therefore they might need further testing. So now we're going to do the International HIV Dementia Scale, and this one is for people with lower education. They don't have to write anything, but they do have to demonstrate significant motor speed and psychomotor speed. First is memory registration. Brian, I'm going to give you four words to recall. Dog, hat, bean, and red. Can you repeat that? Dog, hat, bean, red. Okay, remember that. I'm going to ask you that later on. Now, what I want you to do is, are you left-handed or right-handed? I'm right-handed. Okay, so I want you to take your left hand, and I want you to be tapping your finger and your thumb together as wide as possible, and then together, and I want you to do this as fast as possible. Okay. So let's reset, and I'm going to be counting. Okay, go. Okay, you got it. He did 16 in about five seconds, so he gets full. You have to do 15 or more in, in five seconds. This is actually the hardest one to do because you have to watch the stopwatch as well as how many finger tapping he's doing at the same time, so it, it takes a lot of coordination. <laughs> now, the next we're gonna do psychomotor speed. So I want you to take your non-dominant hand, so your left hand, and I want you to make a fist flat and then like this, okay? Okay, okay so you're gonna be doing that over and over again. That's, you got it. So let me test that here. All right, we're gonna test you for 10 seconds. You can start now. Okay. 
So he did quite a few. Actually, the patients only have to do four correct sequences in 10 seconds, and you were well over 10. So you passed this. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you remember ah, the last four words? I believe they were dog, hat, bean, and red. That's correct. That's good. Okay, so you got 12 out of 12. And anything less than 10 out of 12 is indicative of possible hand. Let's see, and that's it. Thanks very much, Christine.